Hello, I'm American Johnson, and I'm a recovering capitalist. In this video, I will share with you the cautionary tale of how I fell from the graces of the small business community and came to become the dirty commie that stands before you now. This is non-compete, and these are my capitalist confessions. I've had an entrepreneurial spirit since an early age. I can remember in middle school watching these infomercials for these Ronco products. One of them was a furniture restoration varnish, and I thought that what I could do was go around my neighborhood, I lived in the suburbs, and pick up old furniture from the side of the road, bring it back to my house, rub some of this varnish on it, restore it to its original luster, and uh, flip it, sell it for a, for a huge, profit margin. You know, you can make a lot of money refinishing furniture. That's right. That's how my dad put bread on the table. And another product that I wanted to buy was this food dehydrator that they were selling. I thought I could make things like beef jerky and fruit roll up, sell them at school, maybe make some kind of a, a lemonade stand on steroids and just make a fortune selling these, uh, these high quality, nutritious snacks to people. I have a price here today that'll knock your socks off. Fortunately, my parents didn't go for those ideas. Uh, I even showed them little like spreadsheets and business plans that I would write out in these marble notebooks, but uh, they just didn't take the bait, so I never got to test those business ideas out. But I did always have this uh, fantasy in the back of my mind that one day I would be a great entrepreneur. Fast forward to my college days, and I was studying film and marketing and media, and I got an internship at this very small little advertising agency. And part of the work I was doing was helping with the books, and that included invoicing. And I can remember very clearly, I had the strong memory of sitting at this desk with this big, huge CRT, non-flat screen monitor in my face, typing up this invoice. And uh, the company was billing a client 50, 60, $75 per hour for work that I was doing. And I was not making that much money. I was making like less than minimum wage since this was an internship. And, you know, they did have some expenses, they had some overhead, they had equipment to buy and that sort of thing, but I was helping with the books. So I knew this company pretty well and I knew the, the finances and I knew that they were making a hefty profit margin on my labor. And I remember just having this epiphany that I was not going to be a chump like this for very long and that pretty soon I would turn the tables and I would be in that position where I was the one that was making a dime for every nickel my employees were earning. So as quickly as possible, I put together a business plan. I actually went to this small business development center, got some free consultation, made this huge 90 page business plan. And, uh, and while I was still in college at the age of 19, I had founded my first business. So I was able to take out a few thousand dollars in student loans, buy myself this big old non HD standard definition, uh, TV camera and some cheap lights that I managed to find on eBay. They, they came from China, um, got some microphones and I went to work. I was probably about 22 years old when I hired my very first employee. And I can remember just being so excited that I had finally achieved that dream of putting myself in the position where I could send somebody out, pay her $10 per hour, and I could bill the client 50 or $60 myself. Now, as a small business owner, I believe that I was doing the right thing. I thought that I was becoming a job creator. I thought that I was becoming a pillar of my community. And I really did care about my employees. And the reason I'm saying this is because I want you to know that as a leftist now today, as an anti-capitalist, I don't believe that all capitalists are these evil, monstrous villains. I, I don't think that they are all bad people. I think actually what's much more scary is the fact that good people who, who think that they're doing good work in the world can actually be causing a tremendous amount of harm. And that's exactly what I was doing. Now, 2008, 2009 rolls around. I've got a pretty big client list, mostly nonprofit organizations and small businesses, folks that have a fairly small budget so they can't afford the multi-million dollar agencies out there. And what happens next? This is gonna be one of the watershed days in financial markets history. The Dow tumbled more than 500 points after two pillars of the street tumbled over the weekend. Lehman Brothers, a 158-year-old firm, filed for bankruptcy. I was getting invoices later and later and later, and then the money just stopped coming in. I had all these employees to pay. I had all these bills to pay. So I went to the bank, and I pulled out a huge line of credit. They gave me a $10,000 line of credit with no collateral, basically, just some cameras and stuff, but it wasn't worth $10,000. I had, a, I had an American Express with about five or $6,000 on it. I had a Discover card with five or $6,000. I 
and a few other credit cards here and there that I was personally liable for. And um, I used all of that money to pay the bills and to keep my employees uh, working, even though I didn't really have a lot of work, paying work to go around. So I was trying to do my best to keep this ship afloat and I was doing it all basically alone. Now, if I could have changed one thing about that situation, if there's one decision I, I wish that I had made, it would have been to share that company with my workers, to transform it into a, a cooperative worker-owned firm. That would have solved so many problems for me. For one thing, uh, one of my biggest problems was employee motivation. I, I wasn't, even before the, the economy crashed, I wasn't able to pay my employees very much. Um, you know, we were a small business. I had bootstrapped it up and, uh, and we didn't have a lot of capital to go around. So I couldn't pay them very much. I couldn't offer them any kind of health insurance. And this was before the Affordable Care Act. So, you know, insurance would have been five, six, seven hundred dollars a month per employee. And that just wasn't possible. And so naturally, the employees, you know, they were all constantly strapped for cash. Well, we were all basically poor uh, and uh, it was hard to motivate anybody to work. So I ended up picking up a lot of the slack myself. I was working 60, 70 hours a week. It was incredibly stressful. And um, I, if I had just turned over the business and shared it, you know, if, if we had just turned it into a co-op, we would all have that same incentive, that we'd all have that same ownership in the company, and it would have been so much easier to, to distribute the work and distribute the pressure so that we call, could all have been kind of moving in the same direction. It certainly would have been better for myself financially as well, because it's not like the company had all that much value. In fact, it was heavily laden with debt. Now, even if I didn't unload that debt, since it was all kind of personally in my name, I could have at least shared the future building debt with them, and we could have taken on that risk together. There are just so many reasons why I wish I had turned it into a cooperatively owned worker-owned institution. And why did I not do that? Why did that thought never even occur to me? Uh, well, it's because of a certain kind of selfishness, and it's the most unproductive kind of egotistical, pride-driven selfishness. I had put myself into this mindset where I believed that the company was mine. I had built it from the ground up. I had been working at this for years. I wanted to be in control. I wanted to be the owner. And, and that was, any other option would never even have entered my mind at that time. I felt like I was entitled to the autocratic control, direction, and ownership of this company. And why? Why did I have the sense of entitlement? Why did I feel like I had the authority to be the autocratic dictator of this little business? The only reason was that I started it. You know, I was there first. What a childish state of mind to be in. What a, what a terrible excuse to have that much authority and control over other human beings. Because think about it, when you own and operate a business as a sole proprietor like that, as, a, as the capitalist, owner operator, you have complete authority over the work days of all of these people that you're working with. And it's so unjustified. It's such a terrible, flimsy excuse for having that kind of power. I mean, really, what excuse could there possibly be to restrict workplace democracy? We spend most of our waking lives at work. And and these people, these these capitalists, like I like my former self, you know, why would I have that much power over your workday? There's just, when I look at it now, I can't understand the logic. It makes no sense for, for so much power to be in such a small number of hands. And it's not a small, insignificant amount of power. I mean, I was choosing how much people were getting paid. I was choosing whether or not they even had a job to begin with. I was choosing how they were spending every hour of their day at work. It's a lot of power for somebody to have, and it's a very arbitrary reason for somebody to have it. And I certainly didn't earn that kind of power and, and, and that kind of tyrannical position. And yet I, I held on to it for dear life. And I, I think I, you know, I got off on being able to call the shots, being the boss. I think that, you know, that gave me a sort of a prideful, egotistical mindset that was very difficult to get rid of. And I know that I wasn't alone because I worked with a lot of other capitalists and small business owners and CEOs, you know, my client, I had a, in my career, I've had well over a hundred clients and most of them are wealthy business owners. And 
I will tell you something, this is kind of hard to articulate, but when I walked into the office of a, of a fellow business owner as an entrepreneur, as a person with employees, even if my business was smaller and even if I made a lot less money than they did, they kind of looked at me as sort of like on their level in a certain way. And they would share things with me. They would complain about their employees. They would talk about their personal lives with me in a way that they do not talk to me when I'm in a worker employer relationship with the capitalist or when I'm in a, a freelancer client relationship with a capitalist. I, I know that they saw me in a different light when I was a business owner and I had employees. I know that they didn't look down on me the way that they look down on me now as a freelancer. It's a much, much different relationship when I go into a client's office as a freelancer, as a, as a gun for hire or, or as the hired help, which is probably really how they see me, versus the way it used to feel when I walked into their office as a fellow capitalist. Uh, there's just this, and it's not something that was conscious. It's not something that we ever explicitly discussed. It was a prejudice against working class people that we all shared. And I've had capitalists tell me in, uh, in discussions online and, and in real life that I must be a pretty shitty person and I must've been working with some pretty shitty people to have that kind of a point of view about workers. But I'm telling you, I've worked with a lot of capitalists and if it's not 100%, it's in the high 90s. It's a predominant mindset with the capitalist class. They do not respect working people. They do not see workers on equal footing with themselves. And I, I'm ashamed to say it, but it's true. I was in that category myself. I looked down on working people when I was a capitalist. And I thought that I, I was a, superior in many ways. Even though I wasn't making a lot of money, I never got rich, I never got wealthy, but I felt like they were suckers and I was on the winning team, as it were. And I had figured it out and I was smarter and I was, I was superior in so many ways to average working people. And remember, I started out as a capitalist at a very young age. I was 19 years old when I started my first company and I spent very little time in the workforce before becoming a capitalist. So basically all of my 20s, I was a capitalist. I didn't have working class experience like most people have at that age. But now I've had that experience and, I, and I've seen both sides and I can see that this is just an unjust, unjustifiable system that we have here with capitalism. The fact is that capitalism is a system where a very small number of people have way too much power, they're able to accumulate far too much wealth, and they're able to steal the value of the labor of their workers. And, and shame on us, you know, shame on my former self to have spent so much time day in and day out in that office with those people every day of my life with the sole intent of fleecing them, of, of doing everything that I can to try to make it so that I could pay them 10 bucks and put 50 in my own pocket. That was, that was my goal with that entire endeavor that took up so many years of my life and, and so much of my energy. And I'm glad that I ultimately basically failed. I ended up uh, giving the company away to my employees. I sold them all the equipment, took all that debt onto my own shoulders personally, which is a subject for an, another video about how I ended up basically not paying that debt back. Um, but the point of the matter is, I'm glad that I'm no longer a capitalist and I'm glad that things didn't work out with my companies because if I had succeeded and if I had become wealthy, I would be the bad guy. I would be the villain. And uh, I'm so glad that my life worked out differently and that I'm standing here today, having come out on the other end of this, realizing that the work that I was doing for so long was destructive to our society to our planet and to my workers. And I doubt that any capitalists out there are gonna see this video. And if you are a capitalist watching this, I'm sure I've probably pissed you off pretty badly by now. You probably don't wanna hear something like this, but maybe there's something in the back of your mind. Like, I think there was something in the back of my mind when I was a capitalist. I think I knew that what I was doing to some extent was wrong. I think I realized that my employees were getting a bad deal and that 
the behavior of a capitalist is exploitative, but it was deep in the back of my mind and I pushed it down with all of that propaganda about the free market being a gateway to freedom and, and a method for harnessing uh, human nature and greed to uh, push and propel society forward. But somewhere in my mind, I knew that what I was doing was wrong and that my employees deserved better and that I had never earned that kind of autocratic, tyrannical authority. And if you have that voice in the back of your mind and you're starting to doubt this system of capitalism, if you're looking at the wealth inequality in our world, if you're looking at the direction our society is going, talk to me, Re reach out to me. Let's, let's have a conversation. Let's keep this conversation moving forward. I am more than happy to engage in a good faith conversation with any capitalists or pro capitalists, or if you're thinking of starting a small business, let's talk. Let's see if there's, if we can find a way for you to accomplish what you want to accomplish in a less exploitative manner. And if you're a working class person, like I am now, um, I'm sorry for the role that I played in perpetuating this system. I'm sorry that I exploited your fellow workers. And I'm sorry that this system continues with such power over your lives. And I hope that together we can somehow someday put an end to it. So that's it. That's my confession. You now know the story of my rise and fall as a small businessman. If you like this video, I hope you'll give it a big thumbs up, leave a comment, let me know what you think, and consider subscribing. If you didn't like it, call me a beta cuck and move on with your life. Uh, I'm American Johnson. This is Non-Compete. We'll see you next week. Take care of each other. Now, here's the host of Amazing Discoveries, Mike Levy. Welcome. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to our show. Today's program is all about hidden treasure. Got your attention, huh? But before you go searching for your shovel, listen, because the kind of treasure we're talking about is in your own home right now, just waiting to be discovered. You see, it's hidden treasure that most of us think is junk. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Take a look at this old useless piece of furniture. Now that belongs in a junkyard or maybe someone's fireplace. A useless wardrobe turned into a valuable antique in minutes. 